Nope, 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 nope. We're not doing this. Jeez Louise. Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. So very similar to last week's leopard gecko video. Today, we are going to be comparing leopard geckos and crested geckos. I have done a couple of these comparison sort of videos in the past. I've done bearded dragons, blue tongue skinks, ball pythons and corn snakes and crested geckos and gargle geckos. But you guys have asked multiple times for me to do leopard geckos versus crested geckos. And I thought that this was a wonderful idea as both of these species are usually recommended as the best beginner lizard. Hey. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Before we get started though, this video is sponsored by iHeartGecko, so make sure to stay until the end of this video to find out more about this amazing company. Let's get started. The first thing that we are going to talk about when comparing the two is price. The price of these two are going to be very similar with leopard geckos being slightly cheaper than crested geckos. And the reason for that is just because a couple more places sell leopard geckos than crested geckos. But the starting price is pretty similar. Crested geckos are going to be about 40 to $50 starting out, whereas leopard geckos are going to be about 30. Leopard geckos might be a little more expensive to get set up though so just keep that in mind but the prices are very similar for the two and of course if you're wanting special more special colors of these guys that price can go up very quickly so just keep that in mind but just for a normal of each of these you're looking at about that much next up is availability so like I said these guys are both pretty much available everywhere. Leopard geckos are going to be seen more often at chain pet stores like Petco and PetSmart. I have seen crested geckos at both of these places. Usually it's just one or two though, and there's no special morphs, whereas leopard geckos will be a whole bunch in one tank and there's a bunch of morphs in there. But other than that, morph market, local breeders, Facebook, Craigslist, your local pet stores, definitely reptile shows. There are so many tables of leopard geckos and crested geckos at reptile shows, but they're available everywhere. Handling of these guys are both going to be pretty easy with leopard geckos being a little bit easier to handle than crested geckos. So with a leopard gecko, they don't jump. They just kind of walk around. You just have to make sure to do the one hand in front of the other sort of thing as they're walking around on you. As you guys saw in one of my previous videos where my daughter just could not get enough of how soft it was and she was so focused on that the whole time. And she is super duper soft. She's smooth. She is bumpy actually, but she is the softest you could touch. They are really, really soft and that makes them pretty cool to hang out with. Crested geckos, on the other hand, move a lot faster. They are very jumpy. They don't really like to stay in one place, especially as babies. A lot of times when they're adults, they will slow down a little bit, but they still most of the time need to get those first few jumps out before they calm down. They can also scale walls. So if you let it leap onto your wall, you might very quickly be pulling a crested gecko off the ceiling. So definitely keep that in mind. If we're talking about something for a child, I would definitely suggest the leopard gecko over the crested gecko. But for me personally, I prefer handling the crested gecko over the leopard gecko just because it's more active and more fun. So this is 100% just a matter of your preference. And moving on to some basic information about each, which a lot of times this is a pretty big part in helping people decide which one they want. First of all, crested geckos are completely nocturnal. This means that you will not see your crested gecko of course you might see it sleeping in a corner but that's it you won't see it move and be active unless it is nighttime so if you are someone that is not a nighttime person and you want to see your animal moving around this might not be the best bet for you because you're only going to see them at night for me i keep my crested gecko and garo gecko both in my bedroom and at night we can hear them leaping and hitting the other side of the glass and doing stuff like that so keep that in mind you will hear them at night lever gecko on the other hand are crepuscular and that means that they are most active during the dawn and the dusk so most likely at some point you will see your leopard gecko out if you're a nighttime person you'll probably see them out if you're a daytime person you'll probably see them out unless you just completely avoid the sunrise and sunset hours of the day you will probably see them again that is one of the reasons why a lot of people will stray towards leopard geckos as opposed to crested geckos because 
They want to see their animals, not just in the dead of night. Both of them do, however, tolerate handling very well. But the one thing you do need to keep in mind when handling these is that both of these animals can lose their tails. However, with leopard geckos, it's a little more difficult because generally they don't just drop their tail. It has to be pulled or it has to get caught on something or be pinched or something that they feel like a danger is about to happen. Whereas a crested gecko can just get scared and drop it. A leopard gecko also will grow that tail back. It will look a little weird. It'll be fat and it won't have the little lines in it. But a crested gecko cannot grow that tail. So once it's gone, it's gone. That's completely your preference. I know a lot of people actually prefer crested geckos without tails because once it's gone and healed, they never have to worry about that again. But with a leopard gecko, some people just don't like the way that regrown tail looks. Your preference. The size difference is not very big. Leopard geckos will be a bit longer, especially if your crested gecko doesn't have its tail. And they just in general look bigger because they have that thick tail where a crested gecko has a little skinny tail. But leopard geckos are a bit bigger. And they are both pretty long lived animals. They both will live for about 15 to 20 years. This is a very big commitment. No matter which way you go, that's the next 15 to 20 years of your life that you are looking at taking care of that animal. Caring for these guys this is another one where they are on opposite ends of the spectrum and this is make or break for a lot of people trying to figure out which one they want. Their care requirements are basically the opposite of each other. Number one is the type of environment they're in. Crested geckos are from a place called New Caledonia, which is basically a giant rainforest. They like humidity, they love greenery and leaves to hide in. They love places to climb, so they will need vertical tanks as opposed to horizontal tanks. Whereas a leopard gecko is from the Middle East, places like Iraq and Pakistan and Afghanistan. They like dry tanks, they like no humidity. They are terrestrial animals, so they stay on the ground. They will climb a little bit, but mostly they stay on the ground so they like horizontal tanks. These are very vastly different setups and aesthetics for both of these animals. For an adult crested gecko you're looking at a minimum tank size of 18 by 18 by 24 and for an adult leopard gecko you're looking at a minimum tank size of a 20 gallon long. So if you are looking to put a tank in a certain space maybe that'll help you out. As far as heating for these guys. Crested geckos don't really need heat unless it is really cold in your house, unless it's winter time. Crested geckos do good at room temperature or slightly above room temperature, but having a normal light or a grow light on top of their tank if you're going bioactive will bump that temperature up a couple degrees and that's all they need. Whereas leopard geckos need a hot spot of 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's another thing in my opinion that makes crested geckos easier than leopard geckos is because you don't have to worry about adding additional heat but at the same time, once that leopard gecko's heat is set up, you kind of just leave it alone. It just is there. For crested geckos, tank setups as far as substrates, you're looking at things like eco earth or orchid bark or bioactive substrates. Crested geckos do very good in bioactive setups, especially if you are new to getting into bioactive setups. Crested gecko tanks are a wonderful place to start. They also, for those that are worried about impaction, can be kept on paper towels. I personally wouldn't worry about impaction with crested gecko because everything they do is up. They eat off of food ledges that are up off the ground. They hunt from up. They don't really spend a lot of time on the ground in order to get impacted. But if you're worried about that, paper towels work also and they're pretty easy to clean. For leopard geckos, you are looking at things like tile. You can do refty carpet. I would be careful with that one though because their nails are so tiny they can get stuck and kind of yank their nails. You can do things like non-adhesive shelf liners or you can also set up a bioactive tank for a leopard gecko. Arid bioactive tanks, in my opinion, are not as easy as humid bioactive tanks because you are trying to balance a low humidity creature while also keeping your plants watered. And things like springtails, which is part of the cleanup crew for most bioactive setups, don't survive in arid conditions. And another thing that people love to do with leopard gecko tanks is excavator clay. I did this once when I had a bioactive for Percy. It was a mixture of excavator clay and bioactive substrate. And I thought it was really cool to be able to just go in and form hides and then harden and you don't really have to worry about them ingesting it because it hardens like solid once it's done. Really cool idea if that's something that you wanted to look into. And neither one of these guys need any kind of UV lighting. Again, crested geckos are completely nocturnal.
diurnal. They will not be out and taking in any of the UV light when it is daytime. They will be sleeping behind a bunch of shrubbery or in a cork bark tube or wherever. But leopard geckos can be given UV light if you want to. You could give them both UV light if you want to. But leopard geckos have been shown to benefit from it since they are active during sunrise and sunset. So in the wild, they would be getting a little bit of light. So neither of them need it, but leopard geckos will benefit if you want to give them that. Eating. This one is a no contest that crested geckos are easier to feed than leopard geckos. With leopard geckos, they are insectivores. They have to have live bugs. Eating them dead bugs is so bad for them. It is the reason that my leopard gecko is stunted. Dead bugs are not good. They also need a variety of bugs. So things like mealworms and dubia roaches and crickets, anything like that, giving them a variety is very helpful. Mine also love phoenix worms when I can get a hold of those. Wax worms very occasionally don't overfeed them, but they need a big variety of bugs. Whereas crested geckos mostly survive off of pre-made gecko foods like Pangea or Rapashi. Mine will only eat Pangea. When I first got him, he refused Rapashi for weeks until I finally got Pangea because I didn't realize that that was the issue. And you can give them bugs as well. Mine will not eat bugs. He ate bugs when he was a baby and every now and then he'll go through a phase where he'll eat one wax worm. But other than that, he will not eat any bugs, just the Pangea. To me, that's so much easier just getting a little shampoo bottle, you know, the little travel size ones and making a bunch of crested gecko food and keeping it in the fridge and just squirting it in little cups and being done as opposed to gut loading and keeping alive all these feeder bugs. But that's up to you. A lot of people that have an aversion to bugs gravitate towards crested geckos. 100% up to you. If you already have reptiles that take feeder insects, then this one isn't going to matter as much. You actually might benefit from getting that over a crested gecko where you have to order an additional food source. But that is it. Both of these are such amazing creatures. You guys always want me to choose my favorite at the end of these. I love them both so much. I wouldn't give up either of my leopard geckos or my crested gecko for the world. But if I had to pick my personal favorite, it would be the crested gecko just because I love handling them so much and feeding them is just so much easier to me. Again, it all depends on you and your personal situation and what you're looking for, what aesthetic of tank you're looking for. That is all just you and your personal preference. But hopefully this video helped you out a little bit in deciding which one you're leaning towards. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos makes awesome conversion kits for your animals. What these conversion kits allow you to do is to take any old aquarium that you have laying around and turn it into a front opening, vertically standing aquarium with ventilation. These are awesome. This is what I use for my gargoyle gecko and you can use them for crested geckos. They also do provide enough ventilation to grow your plants. Goliath's tank here has been set up for well over a year and her plants are doing fantastic with all that ventilation. So yeah, they are bioactive tank approved. And this company is just awesome. Awesome. They are very close to me. I actually found their products a few years ago when I went to a reptile show for the sole purpose of buying one of their tanks that they had at the time. And I have loved them ever since. So of course I was super excited when they wanted to sponsor me, but yeah, make sure you check them out. And if you do buy a conversion kit or feeding ledge or whatever from them, make sure to put Els Reptiles in the how did you hear about us box just so that they know that you guys are coming from here. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out goes to Jamie Walker 12 for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. This week's subscriber shout out goes to Cecilia Age of Aquarius for commenting on a bunch of my stuff and being super supportive. Thank you so much, Cecilia. Thank you guys so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Very similar with leopard geckos being the price can go up very fast the price can go up and of course if you are wanting and of course mm, price of geckos can lose actually eh, I'll leave that both of them do however tolerate tolerate fantastic day bye it's a weird it's a weird wave oh thank you